Good morning. Welcome to our devotion on this Wednesday morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This morning we'll read from Luke chapter 11, verses 27 and 28. As Jesus said these things, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts at which you nursed. But he said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God, and keep it. <laughs> if a person is to be rescued from the kingdom of the devil, three things are necessary. First, he must understand that he stands under the authority of darkness. Second, from his heart, he must be terrified by this and filled with an inner longing to be removed from this terrible and shameful power. Finally, Satan must give up the right to accuse him before God and the power to rule over him. A person is no more able to rescue himself in this way than someone can awaken himself from death. The first hindrance is that by his own mind, an individual is unable to recognize his true condition. Everyone by nature is completely blind in all spiritual things. No one can sense the natural enmity of his heart against God. Moreover, Satan deludes him into thinking that either there is no kingdom of the devil or that he is no part of it. The most deluded people are not those who manifest coarse unbelief and open sins, but those who are neutral, who do not openly reject Christ, but fail to give him their hearts completely. A second hindrance is that because a person's heart by nature loves sin and the things of this world, he does not entirely wish to be rescued out of his disgraceful slavery, even loving the chains that bind him. A third hindrance is that a person does not forgive himself his sins, and he therefore cannot protect himself against the devil's accusation, cannot sever the cord by which Satan binds him in sin, and cannot change his heart. Thus, he cannot free himself from the domination of Satan. Where is deliverance to be found? By no creature, but only by Jesus Christ, the Son of God and the Redeemer of the world. Christ himself says, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Satan is strong, fully armed, and guards his palace with great power, and considerable cunning. Nevertheless, Christ is, as he says, the stronger one. And when he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. However, Christ compels no one by an irresistible grace, and he doesn't retrieve anyone from Satan's kingdom by outward power. Rather, he says, Blessed, rather, are those who hear the word of God and keep it. This shows that the means he uses to rescue souls out of Satan's kingdom is the word of God. For alone by this is the finger of God, the Holy Ghost, inseparably bound. A person must then hear and keep the word of God. If a person does this, the Holy Spirit omnipotently pulls him with divine power out of the devil's cords. The Holy Ghost first convinces the person that until then he has stood under the authority of darkness. He then works in him a holy horror over it and a deep longing to be rescued from it. He allures him to faith in Jesus Christ, brings him to the forgiveness of his sins, and finally fills him with power to hate all of the devil's works, even the subtlest of sins. This allows him to break off obedience to the devil completely and eternally, to fight victoriously against him, and to walk with a new heart in a new life. 
The word of God is preached to many thousands who remain under the authority of darkness because they wantonly resist the Holy Ghost. However, there are always some who let themselves be rescued by the word, like the woman in our text. When she heard all that Christ said, she was moved by the Holy Ghost and full of divine courage in the midst of the furious, bloodthirsty enemies of Christ. She cried out, blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts which nursed you. These words show how weak she still was in understanding. Therefore, Christ corrected her with the words, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. And we pray. It is thy work alone that I am now converted. Thy power or Satan's work in me thou hast asserted. Thy mercy that doth reach unto the clouds, O Lord, did break my stony heart by thine almighty word. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you, for into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And with that, I wish you all the Lord's blessings on the day ahead.